What's up guys? All right, so I promised you another follow-up video, so here it is. This is gonna be my first impressions about the new 2018 MacBook Pro. So let's get started. All right, so after porting in my information on here, I started downloading Adobe Cloud, Premiere Pro, After Effects, Photoshop, Lightroom. Uh, I got Final Cut Pro installed, Motion 5, Compressor, just all the things I needed in this laptop to get started for my creative space with editing. So as this computer guides you through the setup, well, a couple of things that I've seen and I want to talk about was the Hey Siri, which I found to be extremely responsive. I sent an email to my girls, as well as a text, and did a FaceTime. Not only that, but it opened up apps immediately as soon as I said it. Now, the fingerprint scanner, which is a not new feature, but it's a feature that I've always liked. Again, very responsive. As soon as I put my finger on it, it unlocks immediately. And also going through setup, they show you the difference between the true tone on and having the true tone off. This works very similar to the new generation iPhones that have this feature built into. Now me personally, I do use this on my iPhone and I actually do like it a lot because in no matter what kind of room lighting you're in, the screen actually adjusts the colors with the true tones based on your lighting situation. So I kept it on with my MacBook, but as I'm using my MacBook Pro and I was working along my iMac Pro, which doesn't have it, I just noticed how much warmer it was just in the in this lighting situation. Well, of course, without the 120Ds, just in my living room lighting situation. And I didn't like the, the true tone color on the MacBook Pro. Uh, I actually want to revert it back to just turning it off. Now I will continue to test it in different lighting situations, but right now I prefer it off because I just want that true accurate, just color tones in my photography work as well as my video editing work. So let's talk about the keyboard. All right, so Apple says that it's supposed to be quieter and the whole butterfly thing that they was going on with that they had a really bad issue with is supposedly gone. Let's listen to this keyboard and we'll also listen to my 2017 13 inch MacBook Pro and we'll just get an idea of what it sounds like and with the difference comparison. So let's get into that right now. So holy cow, between the 2017 13-inch MacBook Pro and this keyboard, the new 2018, dramatic difference. I mean, it's from the clickety-clack you hear that's pretty loud on the keyboard on the old version. I mean, Apple did a great job in making it really good in terms of trying to keep it silent. Now looking at the Blackmagic speed test for the SSD internally built in, I have the 256 uh, SSD version. I haven't really got into speed comparisons yet with the video editing with Premiere Pro and Final Cut Pro. I'm actually gonna do that tonight and tomorrow and see what the difference is in terms of uh, you know, working off a MacBook Pro 2017 as well as my iMac Pro. And just for the hell of it with Premiere Pro, I'm also gonna use my 10 core system to have it downstairs and see what the comparison is with that with exports, with 4K video. So to kind of wrap this up, my initial thoughts overall right now in the last two days that I've had this laptop is with Final Cut Pro and Premiere Pro, I haven't really gotten into the major, any major editing, but what I have found so far is very speedy. Uh, I haven't had no drawbacks with 4K playback. Um, in Final Cut Pro, I don't need to do any background rendering yet. And just with added effects and whatnot, it plays extremely smooth. I just got a cable in too to hook it up to my 34 inch monitor. So that way I can kind of use this kind of like a desktop downstairs and kind of really utilize it with an external monitor to see how that works as well. But this laptop, it's lightweight, it's thin. Uh, if you had last year's uh, MacBook Pro model, it's very similar in terms of weight, but the keyboard's way better. So the only thing that I kind of don't like, but I haven't really used it that much yet, and like I said, I'm gonna turn it on in different lighting conditions, is the True Tone. And you're using it with photos, again, if uh, it's you get a different look, of course, and you wanna make sure that when you're working on photos and color grading on videos, you wanna make sure that you're getting the accurate color uh, space, and to do that, I feel you gotta turn it off. But I'm gonna just continue to use it a little more uh, to kind of compare it with it on and off to give it like, okay, does this really work on a creative, productive uh, point of view? So webcam, I FaceTime my girl and she told me that, you know, of course it was a nighttime too and I just had the brightness on the screen. She said it didn't look that bad at all. So if you're gonna be using a Zoom call or using uh, Skype, uh, 1080p, this webcam is, is more than adequate. 
I've used my 2013 webcam on my Apple and it still outbeats any PC laptop that I've used. Heck, even my uh, Logic 920 and 922 webcams better than that. So Apple's always bringing their game up when they bring their webcams. So just know that you don't have to worry about having or using an external webcam for this laptop. And with the speakers, the speakers I feel are extremely loud, especially for a laptop. The speakers are placed accordingly, of course, Apple does a good job making sure the speakers are on top so that way they come to you and hear you directly to your ears. But the sound quality is just <laughs> amazing. So I'm gonna give you an example of what this sounds like through Final Cut Pro X with their sound effects and some of their songs and uh, I'll let you determine what you think. And hopefully this transfers pretty good through the microphone. Yeah, the speakers are like a 10 out of a 10. These are part of the best sounding speakers I've ever heard in any laptop, period. And if you talk about the Magic Touch Bar, uh, I'm not too big on it. It, it looks cool, uh, it seems very helpful, but I, I'm not using it right now. My girl, uh, when she uses the 2017 MacBook Pro, she says she really doesn't use it, is that right? I use it to jump around between the tabs. Right, okay. She rarely uses it, she only uses it to jump between the tabs. Um, I probably won't use it, especially, you know, even going into Final Cut Pro, I know there's like certain things you can use, like blade cuts and whatnot. I probably won't use it because I'm just so dependent on my keyboard and whatnot and my uh, mouse gestures. So, uh, with the, I mean, if, if you liked it from the previous generation, there's nothing that's been, I've noticed that is different from it, but, um, it's, I mean, it's okay. It's nothing that I would, you know, tell somebody, Hey, you gotta get this laptop because of this touch bar, whatever. But uh, those are just my, that's just my opinion, that's just my thought on it. So this is my first initial impressions about the laptop, the new 2018 MacBook Pro 15 inch edition. And again, it's this is not a full review. This is just, it's not even really, you know, a, a weekend. This is just two days in. And what I'm gonna start doing is just like, even this video, I'm gonna edit on this laptop. And I wanna see, how, I'm gonna compare the rendering speed and just the overall just feel of editing on this laptop. But that's it for me, guys. I hope you guys liked this first initial review video. And if you have any comments, put them down below. Any questions you want too, maybe you just something that you wanna see from this MacBook Pro, let me know so that way I can probably do it and put it in my review on the next video that I do. Uh, follow me on Instagram if you wanna see what I'm up to as well. And besides that, my friends, I will catch you guys in the next video.